Hello and welcome to the northernmost city in the entire world. Yes, I am in the Arctic Circle and, well, this is exactly what it looks like. So we are visiting Pivek in, well, the, the height of summer. So it is the last week of May, first week of June. Summer starts officially first of June and the temperatures reach a balmy three to four degrees centigrade at its highest and then at night, which is now, it's about minus two, minus three. But, but in the winter, it goes down to minus 45 quite often and quite easily. And again, I must remind you, it is currently 4 a.m. My body clock is all over the place. It's roughly 11 hours ahead of where I live, which is Johannesburg, South Africa. And the sun never goes down between May and October, whereas from October to April, the sun never actually comes up. So it's either permanently day or permanently night in Pivek. So as you can see, all the buildings here are built on, on piles. So they're not on the ground, they're slightly elevated. Mostly because there's permafrost below us. A, it's very difficult to drill through it, but B, if the permafrost falls out, this whole house tumbles down. And to be fair, this is the only house I've seen that actually looks like a house. All the others are in these apartment buildings, which are very, very colorful. These are all houses in front of you, and they all look the same. And with me is my friend Hugo Kruger. A lot of you might know him. He's a nuclear what? Nuclear something like that? Yeah, I work as a civil engineer for background in nuclear. And on Neil Thurman, we're going to visit the floating nuclear power station, the world's only small modular reactor, or the second one. Indeed. It's in China as well. Um, yeah, it's replacing coal, and this is the northernmost place in the world, and the greenest town in the world. <laughs> because even the district heating is based on nuclear power. Exactly. So we will see the nuclear power station a bit later and we can form part of this video, of course. But tell me, Hugo, how come a small place like this with 5,000 people in the middle of nowhere can have a nuclear reactor, yet most of the world wants, like, not a nuclear reactor? It doesn't make too much sense. No, so the logic here is that um, Russia's got a lot of icebreakers because, you know, um, half the year you need to get through the ice to basically beat the Zeus Canal and logistics. And then they thought, well, why don't we give these small northern towns that basically run on coal on the main, at the moment a uh, nuclear power? So the Russians repurposed a ice-breaking reactor, redesigned a little bit, and now it's on a ship and it's helping this town. And um, why is it here first? I don't know. Why didn't they put it in St. Petersburg? I think they just want to show the world that we can put it in the most northernmost place ever. Um, maybe they wanted to test it far away from the population. So like, well, 5,000 people here, yeah, it's not the end of the world. But be that as it may, this is where they decided to put it. Oh, Hugo, I'm afraid you are incorrect. This is the end of the world because there's nothing north of us. <coughs> this is the most northern town in the world. Yes. Some people say in Canada there's like some village, who cares? Like, this one has a hospital, yeah. it has a cinema, it has a gym. It's got two hotels, it's, it's got, got three restaurants. Five uh, restaurants, I think. It's got a, probably a few bars, but we haven't checked that out yet. Yeah, and uh, as I said, district hospital, nursery school, yeah. primary school and high school. And so the, the Russian government pays you more money to work in Livia. So they get like preferential affirmative action. Um, the student, the kids over here, um, because they want the polar communities to be highly educated, are targeted by universities, I've been told. So yeah, the Russians actually protect their, minor their minorities. Yeah. Who knew? Uh, and I couldn't, I, I don't know what the name is. I can't remember the name of the minorities here. Do you know the name? It's uh, Chukta. The Chukchas, it's yes, the that's Chukchas right. The people. Yeah, they, they're quite cool people. Apparently they still have villages around from this town. So this town is Russian. There's a few Chukchas here, but they should be like Russian Inuits staying not far from here as well. Indeed, and they have no power, as in like no energy. No, they live as nomads as far as I know. And they herd reindeer, that's as far as we know as well. So currently there's about 5,000 people living and working in Pivek. Most people come here for a few years to work and make lots of money. Apparently the government is trying to incentivize people to come to these rural areas and make more money than they can in, say, Moscow or a big city. So they come here for a few years and make a lot of money and then go down south to Sochi or somewhere warmer, of course. So here's one of the interesting things about Pivek. This is a coal power station. It is 80 years old. 
that over there is a coal pile and if you talk to the people in Quebec what they say is uh, before the nuclear reactor was here they had to shut down the town for three weeks to maintain this particular power station so you've got an eight-year-old power station generating 30 megawatts of power which is in better condition than Madupi and Kusile together and this is Pivek. This is an Arctic Circle, a place of 5,000 people that used to be a prison camp. They got better power stations than we have in South Africa. Welcome to Russia. Офис. Офис. И э, место для проведения совещаний. Like вот, каждая каюта оборудована всеми э, средствами индивидуальной гигиены. Душевые, да, туалеты. Если все сняли, то милости прошу. Сейчас мы с вами пойдем э, в центральный пост управления. So откуда производится управление всеми системами, механизмами судна. So this is a school of Quebec. I think it's a primary school and a high school. We're taking a little tour. So interestingly, Rossetom, the people who actually built their power station that I showed you earlier, they pumped a lot of money into schools here in Quebec and uh, otherwise other schools as well across the country. And I asked uh, the lady here, why is that? Are they struggling to fill roles at uh, Rossetom? You know, hardcore scientific roles, maths roles. And she said, no, on the contrary, a nuclear is becoming so popular that Rosetom understands that they're expanding and understand that they'll need people in the future to work there and to have hard science but to have applied mathematics and all the rest of it. So they're actually planning for the future on in house. And that's very, very interesting. This is a poor area of Russia, but yet it's got world class facilities for hard sciences. It's yeah, a country with a plan, unlike most others. You see it like, uh, right outside, it's like a, it looks a bit like a semi gulag. But the houses and the schools, there's sort of all class. Big screens, computers everywhere, the furniture looks good, lots of extra stuff to do here. Quite impressive. This is the town I found out in. It's really big, that's far from everywhere. There's no roads here. But the school looks really, really good. And you have to admit, what other school in the world has access and a view of a nuclear power plant and a coal plant right outside? So Vivek has an entertainment center which we are in at the moment. It's got a movie house which is behind me. It's got a stage and uh, various other things. So we're going to take a little tour of this as well. So in this particular center, they hold uh, concerts. They have a movie screen, so they host movies as well. And there's a variety of other things as well. Just need to tell you, this is a place of 5,000 people and they got this, 5,000.